Welcome to this series of videos we like to call Talk the Talk, and in this video, we're gonna take a look at the Torque Vario screwdriver from Weha. Yeah, now when we talk about Torque, we normally end up with three different groups of electricians ready to chip in. The first one, and uh, congratulations to those who already use a Torque screwdriver. Uh, it'd be good to get your thoughts on how this Weha model compares to one that you may be using already. However, stick around in the video because later on we'll give you some top tips on how to look after a torque screwdriver and some other operating tips that possibly you may not know. The second group, Gary, what camp do they fall into? The non-believers, okay, the people that don't believe you need to use a torque screwdriver. And we've made a separate video where we've taken that myth and we've proved one way or another whether an electrician's arm is actually calibrated for torque. And I'll leave a link to that video in the eye above my head and in the description below. Yeah, and then the third group of electricians are those who possibly aren't even using a screwdriver, and we don't mean screwless terminals like you find on a, a Wago or something like that. We mean electricians who are possibly using an impact driver uh, to install consumer units, and believe me, there are quite a few of them out there because we've seen uh, the results of that, and we've also produced a video that will show you what happens when you do use impact driver on an MCB and other parts of a consumer unit. So if you fall into those two camps, hopefully we'll see you back on this video after you've watched those where we'll look at torque screwdriver. So what we're gonna do first, Gary? Let's jump into having a look at the screwdriver and how to set it up and maybe do some of the terminations up behind me in the Luden consumer unit. We're gonna to need to set it to 2.5 newton meters of torque. So bring in the adjuster bar and I'll roll it round so you can see the numbers increasing. So I've gone to 2.6. To get it to 2.5, it's the window in between. So this uh, torque vario from Weha, we find is useful for most electrical installations because it goes from 0.8 to 5 newton meters. So we've locked in our slotted POSI 2 slim vario bit, and I'm going to get it up to the required torque setting. You hear it click through, and then on to the next one. Okay, so when it clicks, that is it to that 2.5 newton meter setting. It is, yeah. So just come along, they're all the same. So the main switch and the breakers in this board are all set to that 2.5 newton meters of torque. Just making sure my conductor's in, and then through we go. So two more, and then we're gonna change the torque setting in order that we can make the connections in the neutral and earth bar, because they're not 2.5 newton meters of torque. No, so I'm gonna have to drop down to two newton meters of torque. So again, take out the, uh, the bit holder, and bring in that adjusting bar, and again, looking for the 2.2. So again, this is in the window this time, isn't it? Yeah, because it's an even number. Yeah, you'll actually see that number. So we can come back in now, reassemble, and we're ready to do the neutral bar first. So bring it in, just got to make sure you get it into position and a nice firm amount of pressure so it doesn't slip out, and then we can click it through, and we can do these at two newton meters. It's also important to double check any connections that were made in the factory to check that they haven't worked loose during transportation. So in this case, the uh, connection between the switch and the neutral bar. Okay, so just check that one and that's what they're setting. On to the earth bar next, stays at two newton meters of torque. You do a couple of these just to make sure that they're correct. And there we go. Okay, then back in again for the uh, surge protection device. So this is 1.5 newton meters. So again, it falls in between two of the uh, printed markings on the device. Um, so again, we're just going to uh, have to swap the bit on this one because it's a smaller screw terminal there. Normally smaller screw, smaller torque setting as well. Yeah, good piece of device. So yeah, 1.5 now on this with the slotted posi one that we're using in order to get that up to the required setting. There we go. It is an easy process to set up the We Are Talk Vario screwdriver. It would be good to have your thoughts again on how that compares with possibly a screwdriver that you use and what features are different. For those viewers who've tuned in from across the pond, and that means our friends in America, yes, we are using Newton meters when it comes to torque measurement. I still believe you use uh, pound feet uh, or whatever it is. And yes, we are in the UK. And when we went to school, we were taught in kilometers and kilos and all those sorts of things. Although we still drive around in miles and buy pints of beer. Well, obviously when you were at school, Gary, it was probably still, uh, still yards, was it? When you were yeah. down the running track? Pretty quick down the 100 yards, okay? When they extended it to be 100 meters, it seemed to take a lot longer to get to the end. However, if all of this is new, Newton meters, etc., we have produced a CPD training package that I'll leave in a link in the description for it. So you can go over there and increase your knowledge about some of the terms that we're talking about in this video. Yeah, and that is really useful for electricians who have to keep up their annual uh, inspection checks with organizations such as the NIC yeah. and NEC. 
nip it, but now let's have a look at some of the top tips when looking after a torque screwdriver. Tip number one, don't over click, is to stop when you hit the torque setting. When you get the first click, stop and move it into the next position. There is no benefit from going through and hearing several clicks to suggest that therefore you're at the right torque setting. One click is enough. It's clicked and then move to the next terminal, get it to click through and you know you're at the required torque setting. Tip number two. Don't use your torque screwdriver to undo screws. It should be used to tighten them only. Use a conventional screwdriver in order to disconnect conductors. Tip number three. Use a conventional screwdriver, in this case a slotted posi 2, in order to start the process of tightening your conductors. Once they're all in place, introduce your torque screwdriver, set to required torque setting in order to finish off the process of tightening the conductors. Tip number four, check in existing terminations for the required torque setting. Don't use your torque screwdriver like this. First of all, back off the screws using a normal screwdriver, so you have slackened them back off before bringing your torque screwdriver in, set to the required torque setting for the devices. You'll see now that we've gone on a forward motion with one click. We can now guarantee that that is at the required torque setting for that device. Tip number five, Check your screwdriver head is correct for the size of screw that you're going to tighten up. In this case, we should be choosing the slotted posi 1. You must also check the rated value of torque on the side of the bits that needs to be equal to or greater than the value of torque you need to reach for that termination. Tip number six. Don't use your slim vario bits in a drill as they will end up like this. Sorry, Gordon. Six top tips there for you. However, if you've got one, please leave it in the comments below so our community can benefit from your knowledge. However, at this stage, I have got a little confession. I might have been in the past somebody that went to maybe two clicks. Oh, two clicks. Oh, oh, two I, clicker. Because we have heard them be at three or four sometimes, depending on what's uh, been installed. And the other confession you heard in there, was uh, if you return to the workshop and somebody has uh, destroyed uh, your slim vario bits, and, and let's uh, remember, so these slim vario bits from we are used extensively across lots of the insulated screwdrivers that we've looked at a lot on the channel before. Yeah, we've got a lot in front of us here, haven't yeah, we? So let's have a closer look at just some of the other ones. Uh, so here's my favourite, the, uh, the Speed E. So again, you'll see the, uh, the bit just pops in the end there. Okay, and then we're off and running as electric screwdriver. Yeah, it's electric screwdriver, so great. If, you, uh, if you're doing lots of repetitive operations, uh, check out the challenge uh, where we went uh, head to head with a manual screwdriver. Uh, and then into the, uh, some of these extensive packs, which if you're say, working on a lot of different equipment and you need lots of different screwdriver heads, some of these kits are fantastic and even have a different range of uh, obviously handles from a little stubby through to uh, one that's more suited for possibly electronic terminals as well. And let's remember, electronic terminals are particularly sensitive to uh, uh, over torque, especially if they're on the PCBs. They class this as the starter kit here because obviously you get the, the screwdriver, the bar to adjust the torque setting, and a couple of bits being the slotted posi ones and twos. However, for me, it isn't a starter kit because if you already own the pouch, you've obviously got a lot of the slim vario bits as well. So of course, this could easily be added into the pouch, couldn't it, Gordon? Yeah, good. And uh, if, you, if you're not from that, you've got your, uh, your pouch that you started with, Gary, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, I'm very precious of this thing. Obviously, my torque screwdriver and a standard screwdriver in there, which is obviously very handy because we now know we shouldn't be undoing screws with our torque screwdriver, and we should also start the tightening up process with a standard screwdriver. So that's all covered in this pouch here. All right, so that's a handy, yeah. handy bit of kit for possibly those people who are doing that final testing and inspection. Uh, the other question we get asked a lot is obviously how do you check that your torque screwdriver is operating to the uh, correct torque and that other thing about calibration and how often it should be calibrated. So Weha's recommendation for calibration is once a year right. or 5,000 clicks or clunks. Okay, and I can already hear people going, oh, something else, something else. However, let's think about our MFT tester. Obviously, we look after that, we keep it in the box, we don't throw that around in the back of the van because obviously it's a, a valuable piece of equipment that we use in the electrical industry. And we know that we have to have it calibrated every year, as well as continual calibrations ourselves that we record throughout that year, things like carrying out insulation resistance tests, continuity, uh, fault loop impedance, and RCD tests on known circuits to just prove 
move in between times, calibration is there. And there's a bit of kit that can help us do this with our torque screwdriver, there is. isn't there? Yeah, and you're right, Gary. It is just, it is about treating it like you would another piece yeah. of test equipment. It's certainly not a screwdriver. It looks like a screwdriver. Yeah, treat it like a tester. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, so we have produced this handy device to check that yeah. actually the torque Absolute. screwdriver is working to a defined torque. And we can show you how that works. Okay, so let's have a quick look at it. So, so okay, works. there we go. So this requires us to set the screwdriver to 2.8 Newton meters. Okay, so it's the quick check it's called, so yeah. It's a, yeah. So it's a quick you're going to set this, sorry, set it again, 2.8. 2.8, so it's going to check it to a defined, so I'm going the wrong direction there. So let's just go to... So every time I check it against this, I set it to 2.8. 2.8. I've got a bar to interconnect the two together. Yeah, that clicks in there. So then switch the device on. We'll wait for an amber light. Insert the tool in there. And I'm just going to do one, one twist. Okay. And ah, right. you see I've got a green light. Okay, is that good? Yep, that's good. Okay. So just to uh, show it, obviously, uh, you do set it to 2.8, but if it wasn't, I'll say I'm going to implicate that it's not working to the right and we'll turn it down so you're going to turn it down so we should be checking it at 2.8 if it wasn't at 2.8 and to replicate that you've turned it right down yeah. we should see something happen when we do the quick check yeah, yeah so i'm going to do repeat the process again so i've now set this to two newton meters okay so we're replicating a, a problem with the device because it isn't at 2.8 yeah so, so again, just one click ah yeah red light to show that it's not uh, it's not hitting that 2.8 newton meter torque there we go that's really clever, isn't it? So, of course, not. I'll get in front of it. So, I'm going to have to have this calibrated, aren't I? Uh, no, you don't have that calibrated. Oh. That, that works for a certain prescribed amount. It's not a calibration uh, tool. It, it's just a quick check device. Uh, so possibly you've got a team with lots of uh, torque screwdrivers out there. You can obviously bring them in periodically and have a quick, a quick check. So it, uh, for me, it's when your MFT comes in, maybe a maximum of three months, and you're doing all those checks internally on it. Maybe you've got a checkbox. Again, the torque screwdriver has been checked at the same time for that best practice. So possibly an idea for the wholesalers who are selling WeHa equipment to be to keep one of these uh, on the counter so when your customers coming in to uh, possibly buy some other kit or pick up their other uh, parts for their projects, they can quickly check whether their screwdrivers are operating as required. But we're always interested to hear your thoughts about torque. And if you're uh, still on the fence as to what you do with, uh, with uh, electrical equipment and setting the torque, check out those other two videos. There's some absolute treats in there. What happens when you use an impact driver on electrical equipment and have electricians got calibrated arms?